Haiti is always described as the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. But during its height at Saint-Domingue, it was the richest place in the Americas. Its richness was all rooted in slaves. Its wealth was based on human capital. Few intended colonial slaves should take democratic ideas to heart. Far too much was at stake. Sugar greased the wheels of the 18th century economy, and Saint-Domingue was the sugar capital of the world. To Saint Louverture and the Haitian Revolution. Some blacks managed to escape slavery. Many had been born free, fathered by white planters. Others had gained freedom through their own wits or talents. One such man was Toussaint Louverture. That ceremony of Wakaima is the first Haitian Congress, the beginning of the revolution. Haitian tradition says the slaves of Saint-Domingue planned that night to revolt. On the night of August 22nd, 1791, a thousand enslaved Africans attacked their masters. The eruption of violence put Toussaint Louverture in a difficult position. His own fortunes were tied to the plantation system and he had straddled the white and black worlds for some 15 years. He was the owner of two or three plantations. He was not of the same class anymore. Back in the capital city, as Toussaint helped his former master flee the violence, Saint-Domingue's whites repelled assault after assault. They soon regrouped and launched their own offensive. The island's 500,000 slaves outnumbered whites by 12 to 1. But their ultimate prospects were poor. Few had experience in military strategy, and they had no unifying history or long-term vision. So Toussaint is sent to negotiate with the planters with the idea that, in a sense, a settlement can be reached. The settlement is not only for the freedom of some of the insurgent leaders, but also for some reforms on the plantation. Small reforms, but reforms that, at least in the letters they describe, their followers really want. The whites said no. They said no, because at that time, they were the one who wanted revenge. This had cause for worry. Less than two years after joining the rebellion, Toussaint Louverture had risen to the top of the rebel army. I am Toussaint Louverture. My name is perhaps known to you. In 1793, he wrote an open letter to the island's disenfranchised. I have undertaken vengeance. I want liberty and equality to reign in Saint-Domingue. I work to bring them into existence. Unite yourselves to us, brothers, and fight with us for the same cause with his letter, he announces two things. He announces, first of all, his commitment to the process, to the project of emancipation, and he announces his presence as a leader, maybe even the leader. He has gained great respect from his followers. And with this proclamation, he's essentially saying, you want freedom, and I'm the one who's gonna bring you that freedom. So I'm the person to follow in this regard. But to say at this time was addressed now, the empires of France, Spain, and England, along with a vast army of former slaves, were fighting for control of the small island colony. Word that the French revolutionary government had freed its slaves reached Saint-Domingue quickly. It was one of history's great watersheds and due largely to the extraordinary military accomplishments of Toussaint's army. Toussaint had already been appointed brigadier general and then governor of Saint-Domingue. No black man had ever risen so far in the colonies. In 1802, Toussaint was stunned to see the largest French expeditionary force ever assembled entering Saint-Domingue's harbor. Toussaint Louverture fought the invading French army for three grueling months. On May 6, 1802, Toussaint Louverture surrendered. But a month later, he was called to a meeting with the French commander. Toussaint was arrested on charges of conspiracy. 